Chapter 3, Learning Objective 6, Explain the Use of and Prepare Closing Entries and a Post-Closing Trial Balance. At the end of a fiscal year after financial statements have been prepared, the revenue, expense, and dividend account balances must be zeroed so that they can begin to accumulate amounts belonging to the new fiscal year. To accomplish this, closing entries are journalized and posted. With closing entries, we transfer each revenue and expense account balance, as well as any balance in the dividend account, into retained earnings. Revenues, expenses, and dividends are therefore referred to as temporary accounts because their balances are zeroed out at the end of each counting period. Balance sheet accounts, such as retained earnings, are permanent accounts because they have a continuing balance from one fiscal year to the next. The closing process transfers temporary account balances into a permanent account, which is retained earnings. There are four entries in the closing process. The first is to close the revenue accounts to what's called an income summary account. The second entry is to close expense accounts to the income summary account. After entries one and two are done, the balance in the income summary account must be compared to the net income or loss reported on the income statement. If the income summary balance doesn't match the net income or loss reported on the income statement, then revenues and or expenses were not closed correctly. Once we're confident the income summary account has the right balance, we'll close the income summary account to retained earnings. Then the fourth entry involves closing dividends to retained earnings. Note that the dividend account is not closed in the income summary account because dividends is not an income statement account. The balance in the income summary account is transferred to retained earnings because the net income or loss belongs to the shareholders. Here are the closing entries for Big Dog. The first entry closes the repair revenue account with a debit or decrease to repair revenue and a credit or increase to income summary. The second entry closes all of the individual expense accounts with credits or decreases and then a single debit of 8,643 to the income summary account. The balance in the income summary account would be the same as the net income for the period at $2,057 and it would have a credit balance which then must be closed to retain earnings. So we will debit or decrease the income summary account and credit or increase the retained earnings account. Here's what the closing of all the revenue and expense accounts looks like with T accounts. See how they all end up in income summary with revenue on the right or credit side and expenses on the left or debit side. When the income summary is closed to retain earnings, in the third entry, the $2,057 credit balance in the income summary account is transferred to retained earnings, and as a result, the income summary is left with a balance of zero. If there is a net loss rather than net income, the income summary account will have a debit balance after revenues and expenses have been closed. To close the income summary account where there's a net loss, we would debit or decrease the retained earnings account and then increase the income summary account with a credit. Finally, we close the dividends account directly to retained earnings by debiting or decreasing retained earnings and crediting or decreasing the dividends account. The dividends account is left with a zero balance and retained earnings is left with a credit balance of $1,857. Notice that the $1,857 must agree to the retained earnings balance on the statement of changes in equity. A post-closing trial balance is prepared immediately following the posting of the closing entries. Its purpose is to ensure that all the debits and credits in the general ledger are equal and that all the temporary accounts have been closed. Only the balance sheet or permanent accounts have balances and are carried forward to the next accounting period or accounting year. All temporary accounts can begin the new fiscal period with a zero balance so they can begin to accumulate amounts belonging to the new time period.